So good evening everyone this is Dr Vineet Sahgal and welcome to our numero uno series in ophthalmology the topic that i am going to discuss today is a very important topic not for only the residents it is also very useful for the pg aspirants interns optometry interns and the third year students because you can get a short case or long case or a professional question on this topic which is retinal detachment so in this talk session i would basically telling you what are the various types of retinal detachment and how to basically distinguish between the various types and what are the basically treatments of the retinal detachment i am your ophthalmology educator dr vineet sagal and you can see my all the special classes live videos free of cost all in the unacademy learning app you can just download the unacademy learning app and then my use my code ophthal10 to basically unlock the free platform If you are a PG aspirant, you can basically get the guidance from the top educators throughout the country in lot of plus courses which are going on, and you can enroll for any one of them and can use the code of Thel Ten to subscribe for the program. We have a lot of top educators with me and Dr. Zainab, Dr. Preeti, Dr. Anchal. Lots of top educators all around. You can basically select your educator through which you want to take the coaching, and then you can ask the doubts also. so very important is those who are not a subscriber but still who want to basically get the advantage you can use the neat pg t20 test series fmg t20 test series 2022 test series ini ct daily t20 test series grand test series or the scholarship test and very important is you can use ask the doubt option also for basically asking your doubt to any of the educator okay so with this i would be starting my session that is on retinal detachment before i start the session this is the compulsory voice and the video check am i audible to all of you just give me a thumbs up okay fair enough so we would be talking about a very important topic that is retinal detachment okay so what is actually a retinal detachment can you tell me avinash what do you understand by retinal detachment unfortunately it is a misnomer there is no detachment but actually there is a separation of neurosensory retina from the retinal pigment epithelium so i talked about the various layers of retina in my class earlier so we have nine layers of retina which i called neurosensory retina and they are attached to the 10th layer which is called retinal pigment epithelium so if there is a detachment of neurosensory retina from the rp this is basically called a retinal detachment okay so what is the definition it is the separation of neurosensory retina from the retinal pigment epithelium and what are the three types so you can just remember the three types are regmatogenous tractional and exudative retinal detachment okay so what are the various types and how you can distinguish between them we would basically answer one by one so first of all the most important and the most common type of retinal detachment is your regmatogenous retinal detachment what is the meaning of word regma regma per se means there is a hole or a tear so what is happening from a hole or a tear is that the vitreous is basically percolating in the inner part between the rpe and the neurosensory retina and then it is detaching it okay so this liquefied vitreous seeps through the tear or the hole and causes the retinal detachment okay so this is basically called a regmatogenous retinal detachment now if let's say you have a hole here okay so the shape of retinal detachment that you would be getting is like this okay similarly if you have a hole in the inferior part you would get a retinal detachment like this okay so basically you do not have to go into the details how would be the configuration you just have to remember that the shape of the regmatogenous retinal detachment basically depend upon the location of the retinal hole or the retinal tear are you getting my point just give me a thumbs up ओके सो जो रेटिनल डेटेचमेंट किस तरह का होगा वो डिपेंड करता है कि होल या टियर कहां पर है एंड दिस रूल इज बेसिकली कॉल्ड लिंक ऑफ रूल ओके सो रिमेंबर द वर्ड दिस रूल इज कॉल्ड लिंक ऑफ रूल 
have been asked again and again in the exams. So if you, any one of you wants the detail of the link off rule, you can just message to me on the unacademy, uh, unacademy let's crack neat PG telegram app. The basically link of the let's crack neat PG telegram app is given in the description of this video. You can through the link basically can join there. Okay. Okay. So this is basically the link off rule. Now, Sometimes they ask in a long question, what are the various signs and the symptoms of the link of rules? So signs and symptoms of the regmatogenous retinal attachment. So first of all is something, it is a, like a curtain which is falling over the eye. Okay. So let's say you have this one. This is a curtain. Okay. So I can see here and still it is basically falling it like this. Okay. So this is falling like this. This is basically a called a, this is called a curtain fall, falling over the eye. This is the most common. This is, can you appreciate? This is the most common sign of the retinal detachment. Then what can be the other signs? The other signs can be flashes or floaters. So you would see that in your field of vision, you are seeing some flashes. Or you would see some black spots, which earlier was not there. And one point of time, they start increasing in your field of vision. Okay. So remember, a static floater can be there in the vitreous degeneration or even in the posterior vitreous detachment. But if it is a like a rain of floaters and the flashes, then this means that the patient is maybe suffering from the regmatogenous retinal detachment. Okay. Then because you are having a retina which is detached from its bed, okay, or the neurosensory retina which is detached from the RP, and there is a fluid collection between the neurosensory retina and the RP. So the Choroidal reflex, the orange reflex that comes from choroid that is not fairly visible. Okay, so we would not get a orange reflex, we would get a grayish reflex. So this is called gray reflex on retinoscopy. So this can be another sign. Then if there is an extensive RD, if there is an extensive damage to the retinal nerve fiber layers and the ganglion cell complex, then this patient may have a RAPD which is called relative afferent pupillary defect. Okay, so everyone just give me a thumbs up if you are able to understand this point. Okay, so the next point I would like to tell you here is that what happens sometimes is, let's say this is your eyeball and here you had a, a retinal detachment like this. Okay, you have a, a retinal detachment like this and you have the fluid which is percolated inside. Now what would happen is that when you basically hold your face and move your face, this shape of RD would also change. Okay. So this shape of RD because of the liquefied vitreous, it changes with movement of the head. Are you getting my point? So this is basically called folds of retina that move with the movement of eye in a fresh retinal attachment. I also call it shifting sign or I also call it shifting fluid. Are you getting my point? Just give me a thumbs up. So basically, when you hold your sir, then your shape of retina also changes. What do we call it? What do we call it? A shifting sign. Okay? So what do we call it? We will get a shifting fluid. So shifting fluid will get a shifting fluid where there is a fresh retinal detachment. Okay? Last but not the least, there is a sign which is called Sheffer sign. So what happens in a Sheffer sign? So because of the RP, because of the tear, retinal tear, the RP cells and other cells which are there in the retina, they come in the vitreous and basically they are seen in a slit lamp examination posterior to the posterior capsule of the lens. So this lens is ठीक है और लेंस के पीछे यहाँ पे पिगमेंट्स हैं और यहाँ इनकी पारी चल रही है ठीक है सो दिस इज़ योर 
pigments which are behind the lens so this is basically called a Schaeffer sign so it is the pigmented cells floating in the anterior part of the vitreous behind the lens which can be a sign of a hole or tear in the retina okay it can be a sign of the hole and tear in the retina this is basically called a Schaeffer sign okay now what are the various risk factors for the retinal attachment so first thing can be i told you there can be a retinal tear or retinal hole the second thing can be if there is a weakness or thinning of the retina this thinning of the retina which is seen near the peripheral part of the retina these are called lattice degenerations okay then sometimes this thin retina is also seen whenever there is a high myopia so another risk factor is high myopia then if there is a trauma to the eye a blunt trauma to the eye any patient who has undergone any intraocular surgery or if the patient is having a aphakia so i repeat what are the various risk factors these are the lattices which are the thinning of the retina retinal tears and the retinal holes high myopia trauma intraocular surgery or aphakia so this you have to just remember the various risk factor so any of my intern who is basically attending the next session agar aapko koi bhi patient aata hai wo bolta hai ki sir aankh mein chamak dikhai deni shuru hui hai do teen din se ya fir aankh ke aage kafi kaale kaale dhabbe aa rahe hain to you would definitely take a history of if there is a blunt trauma a intraocular surgery or a aphakia in the patient okay okay so now we would show you a picture of a regmatogenous retinal attachment so definitely you would ask me sir where is the tear and where is the hole so sometimes the folds of the retina if you can appreciate just give me a thumbs up so the folds of the retina can be so much extensive that your retinal tear or retinal hole cannot be visible here okay so can you see the difference in the color here and here so this is a very extensive retinal detachment of the superior temporal region so sometimes they would ask that what would be the field loss in this type of retinal attachment so the field loss would be inferiorly so i would say the patient would have a inferior field loss in a superior retinal detachment okay so now i come to the lattices so what are the lattices they are the zone of weakness in the peripheral retina okay so they are the zone of weakness in the peripheral retina another very important point that you have to remember is there is a internal limiting membrane deficiency so aap puche puchoge sir internal limiting membrane deficiency ka kya matlab hai so i made 10 layers hoti hain so jo 10th jo topmost layer hai that is called internal limiting membrane so if there is a deficiency of internal limiting membrane this means there is a thinning of the retina and the inner layers are exposed to the vitreous okay so this is basically a lattice degeneration and the vessels blood vessels which are seen over it they are like this okay so these are called criss crossed vessels so the vessels are criss crossed and the vitreous which is above the lattices usually the vitreous is gel like fluid but in this it is liquefied okay so देखो कितनी सारी चीजें मिल रही हैं आपकी आपका रेटिना थिन है ठीक है साथ में आपका विट्रस भी जो है वो वॉटरी है तो वो इजीली जो है वो रेटिना के थ्रू परकोलेट कर जाएगा ओके सो ये ऑल दीज ऑल साइंस बेसिकली टेल यू दैट दे आर द पोटेंशियल सोर्स ऑफ रेटिनल अटैचमेंट एंड रिमेंबर दीज टाइप ऑफ लेटिस आर मोर कॉमनली सीन इन हाई माइओपिक्स ओके सो एनी वन हु इज हैविंग अ माइनस सिक्स पावर और अ एक्शियल लेंथ which is more than let's say uh, 26.5 uh, millimeter so these are the patients who are having a high myopia so these signs are very common in these patients who are having high myopia so remember the important points regarding the lattice degeneration okay the next point which is asked few years back in the exam was what is the difference between a fresh or a recent retinal attachment and how you can differentiate it from क्रॉनिक रेटिनल अटैचमेंट सो यहां पर आपको एक चीज समझनी है तो फ्रेश रेटिनल डिटैचमेंट बेसिकली देर इज द फिनोमिना ऑफ शिफ्टिंग फ्लूड ओके सो वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ शिफ्टिंग फ्लूड यू चेंज द 
position of head and you get the various folds in the retina changing its space its place okay so the shape of retinal attachment basically changes with the movement of the patient okay then it is filled with fluid so it is bullous like a like a balloon you have seen na so balloon ko agar aap apni jagah se aage piche karoge to balloon bhi apni shape jo hai wo change karega so this is bullous okay so serous watery type of fluid that is there in a fresh detachment and there is no sign of fibrosis okay so i write it here shape of rd changes with the movement of the patient it is bullous in character and there is no signs of fibrosis in contrast to the chronic retinal detachment now you would tell me sir how much is the time period where you say it is a chronic retinal detachment so time period per se is not a criteria but usually we say that if it is more than 3 months definitely it is a chronic retinal detachment and what are the various signs of the chronic retinal detachment so i just told you that let's say this is your eyeball okay and you had a retinal detachment few months back here so if around this retinal detachment you get fibrosis okay so basically around this if you are having a fibrosis so what it would do is that it would basically have a demarcation between the normal retina and the detached retina okay this demarcation line i call it watershed line okay and because of this retinal de detachment long standing retinal detachment there would be a thinning of the retina okay we can breathe very good so there would be a thinning of the retina and the cells would be coming in the so the cells which are basically coming from this detached retina into the vitreous they would be causing the fibrosis or fibrotic strands here i call it proliferative vitro retinopathy okay so i repeat what are the signs of chronic retinal detachment there can be watershed or demarcation lines there can be thinning of the retina there can be proliferative vitro retinopathy and this basically can form a retinal cyst okay so these are the basically signs of a chronic retinal detachment give me a thumbs up if you are able to understand the point okay okay so now with this these are the some important points regarding the regmatogenous retinal detachment now i would be talking about the second type of retinal detachment which is called exudative retinal detachment okay so what is actually a exudative retinal detachment so here the serous fluid basically accumulates between the rpe and the neurosensory retina okay so i just make it a diagram like this i told you that we have the nine layers in the retina okay and this the 10th layer what is the 10th layer which is in touch with the choroid so this is my retinal pigment epithelium this is my neurosensory retina and this is my retinal pigment epithelium so what is happening is if this the fluid which is accumulating here okay the fluid that is accumulating here it is because of the it is because of the leakage of the blood vessels which are beneath the rp or in the choroid or if there is the leakage of the fluid from the retinal vessels and this is basically causing the exudates or the fluid to basically accumulate in the sub retinal area and detaching the retina this is called exudative retinal detachment so basic funda ye hai ki yahan par koi hole ya tear nahi hai aankh ke andar ki apni vessels jo hai wohi leak kar rahi hai jiski wajah se jo fluid hai wo aapka neurosensory retina aur rpe ke beech mein jo hai wo accumulate ho raha hai so this is basically called exudative retinal detachment is it clear dr rahul dr bipin dr asif avinash okay so second thing is because there is no hole no tear so there is no exodus of the cells in the vitreous cavity so you do not feel that there is a photopsia the floaters or flashes in the eye so there is absence of the symptoms like photopsia or the floaters 
the next important thing is now this fluid which is basically getting accumulated here if you change your movement or, or if the change your head head position or if the movement of the head is there then this would also cause the change in the shape of the retina okay so what i call i call it shifting fluid so shifting fluid can be seen in exudative retinal detachment and it also can be seen in a fresh regmatogenous retinal det detachment are you getting my point so what are the most important points here that have been asked in the exam so shifting fluid would be there and there is basically leakage from the vasculature okay and there is no tears and hole so these can be important points that can be asked in your exam now if you can see this is a picture of a exudative retinal detachment so can you see there are lot of exudates hard exudates you can see here and the glow of the retina which you are seeing that is not very convincing it is more of a hazy type of glow so what is happening if you can see in this area there is exudate which is beneath the retina and that is basically causing the detachment of the retina okay so yahan pe aap samajh sakte ho ki koi cheez hai okay chahe wo exudates hai ya vasculature se aapka fluid nikal raha hai jo ki retina ko jo neurosensory retina ko rpe se alag kar raha hai so this is basically causing exudative retinal detachment so what can be the most common reason of this exudative retinal detachment so if there is a increase in the blood pressure okay if there is sometimes a vasculitis or if there is a inflammation of the inner cords like if there is a inflammation of sclera inflammation of choroid or if there is a vasculitis like a cords disease or if there is a tumor in the eyeball in the uveal region okay so this all can cause a exudative retinal detachment just give me a thumbs up if you are able to understand so koi bhi cheez jaise blood pressure bad gaya ya fir aapko koi tarah ki vasculitis hai ya aankh mein koi kisi tarah ka tumor hai okay ya fir ekdam se aankh ka pressure kam ho gaya ya fir wet armd okay because there also you have a vessels which are basically coming beneath the choroid these all can cause the exudative retinal detachment so i repeated once again the various causes of exudative retinal detachment they can be toxemia of pregnancy malignant hypertension vkh syndrome posterior scleritis vasculitis like cords disease vhl syndrome malignant melanoma and sudden loss of iop and cnbm so those students who have my book this is something these lectures in the numero uno in ophthalmology i would be basically telling you uh, shorya one by one line by line explanation of all this okay so the very very important point is that if you have any doubts in ophthalmology from my notes or any notes that you are following it would be very grateful if you basically attend these sessions and ask your doubts okay okay chalo then next we come to the next type of retinal detachment which is called tractional retinal detachment okay so what is the tractional retinal detachment the funda that you have to appreciate here is asif that basically the tractional folds okay basically because of the fibrotic bands they are basically pulling the retina from its bed okay this is basically causing the neurosensory retina to come again or to come over the rp so anything which causes fibrotic bands like proliferative diabetic retinopathy rop vasculitis toxocara or sickle cell retinopathy any of them can cause a tractional retinal retinal detachment agar wo puchte hain what is the most common cause of tractional retinal detachment in adults then it is proliferative diabetic retinopathy if they ask the most common cause of tractional retinal detachment in preterm children then your answer is rop is it clear okay chalo so if you can see then these patients because this is a tractional retinal detachment is a type of chronic retinal detachment that and there is no fluid accumulation okay can you appreciate asif isme jo retina hai usko khinchte hain isme koi fluid accumulation nahi hai so there would be no shifting fluid here okay very important is there would be no shifting fluid here this would be a question and 
the even if you change the movement of the head there would be no mobility of the retina okay so there is a severely restricted retinal mobility that's how you can differentiate between a tractional retinal attachment and even in a exudative retinal attachment if you can see so from this you can see that the proliferative diabetic retinopathy can most commonly cause retinal attachment agar you can appreciate these are the findings so this is my optic nerve head you can see it is a very pale disc and can you see this fibrotic bands so this fibrotic bands is basically elevating the retina and this is causing a tractional retinal attachment what are the other findings you can see you can see some black spots here and there these are the prp spots and you can see some hard exudates also here okay and you can see a hemorrhage also here okay so this is a patient who is suffering from proliferative diabetic retinopathy so if they ask that what is the common cause of the vision loss in a patient of proliferative diabetic retinopathy you would say sir it can be a vitreous hemorrhage or a tractional retinal detachment which is involving the macula okay so these can be the most common cause of decrease in the vision in the patients who are suffering from proliferative diabetic retinopathy is it clear everyone okay chalo so the funda is that if there is a rrd regmatogenous retinal detachment it is because of the retinal holes or the retinal tears if you have tractional retinal detachment it is because of the fibrous bands if you have a exudative retinal detachment it is because of the fluid connection which is beneath the retina but remember there is no hole there okay so this is the concept of three types of retinal detachment okay then we have another term which is called retinoschisis now yahan par samajhne wali cheez bahut zaruri hai that what is actually a retinoschisis so these are the 10 layers okay so if there is a separation of the inner layers of retina okay so your outer plexiform is basically separated from the inner nuclear so this is called retinoschisis remember in rd what is the separation separation is at the level of neurosensory retina from rpe so this is basically neurosensory retina from rpe this is your retinal detachment and if they ask the separation of inner layers of retina this is called retinoschisis okay and very important is usually you do not need any treatment in the retinoschisis it settles on its own so at your level you just have to basically uh yes tractional pull by the vitro so the vit, not vitro retinal membrane you say abdul the word that i use is fibrotic bands in the vitreous okay so it does not require any treatment the retinoschisis and it settles on its own okay so now we come to the what are the various treatments of the retinal detachment so first of all i would tell you about the treatment of the regmatogenous rd and the first one we do is called a pneumatic pneumatic retinopexy so pneumatic the word pneumatic means there is a gas okay so what we are doing is we are basically having a, a retinal detachment here i am putting a gas bubble in the retina and this gas bubble is slowly expanding and when it expands it causes a tamponade from inside which is basically causing the retina to go down towards its, its base are you getting my point vishnu so basically jo aapne bubble dala hai ni wo bubble dheere dheere expand karega aur wo wapas usko retina ko apni jagah pe jodne ki koshish karega sath mein aap kya karoge aap yahan se jo hai wo ek halka sa drainage bhi kar sakte ho so what is this procedure called this procedure is called pneumatic pneumatic means gas and retinopexy retina dobara attach ho jata hai this is called pneumatic retinopexy okay so you can use gases here so what are the gases you can use first of all you can use air then you can use sulfur hexafluoride as vishnu has said and can you tell me any other gas that i can use which is the longest acting so sabse zyada der tak wo tamponade degi aisi kaun si gas hai so remember this was a question 
asked few years back in the exam this gas is C3F8 okay so these are the various gases which can be used so kahan kahan par use kar sakte hain so we can use it when there is a recent onset retinal detachment okay so if there is a recent onset retinal detachment there is a regmatogenous uh, retinal detachment and there is a superior break okay so i just tell you here what is the meaning so agar wo aapka chronic retinal detachment if there is a chronic retinal detachment the fluid would be very viscous it would not be going back so, but if there is a recent onset in the superior part okay then the gas bubble when it expands it would basically make the retina go back into its place okay so it should be a recent onset rd it would be a superior rd because gas to upar jayegi if you have a inferior rd then it would won't act gas niche to nahi jaati na upar ki taraf jaati hai so recent rd superior rd and if there is only a regmatogenous retinal detachment only then you can have a use a pneumatic retinopexy now problem kya hoti hai so problem ye hoti hai ki if there is a patient who is having a some back problem okay he cannot put the your uh, head in a fixed position to let's say usne head aise kar liya okay he moved his head like this so your position of the eyeball would change okay so the gas which usually have to go like this because of the position of the head he would go back like this so jahan par usko act karna hai wahan par wo nahi act kar payega okay so that's why this this patient if the patient who cannot maintain the stable position let's say he has a spinal problem or he would he is a mentally unstable patient he cannot basically go ahead with this type of so this type of surgery which is called pneumatic retinopexy so pneumatic retinopexy is basically not used in the patients who are old debilitated patients or who are having mentally unstable very important also is that if you have done a pneumatic retinopexy you tell the patient to avoid air travel okay so post operatively agar aapke paas koi patient aata hai to aap bologe ki sir jo aapka patient hai इसको बोलना है कि एयर ट्रेवल बिकॉज एयर ट्रेवल में क्या होता है कि आपका एटमोस्फेरिक प्रेशर चेंज होगा सो द पेशेंट शुड नॉट बेसिकली गो फॉर द एयर ट्रेवल इज इट क्लियर एवरीवन जस्ट गिव मी अ थम्स अप ओके सो द नेक्स्ट प्रोसीजर इज कॉल्ड स्क्लेरल बकलिंग ओके सो व्हाट इज एक्चुअली अ स्क्लेरल बकलिंग स्क्लेरल बकलिंग मीन्स दैट वॉट यू डू हेयर इज यू आर हैविंग अ रेटर अटैचमेंट okay so this is the area of retinal detachment so first of all you put a needle so with the needle what you do is you aspirate the fluid here so aapne aspirate kar liya fluid aur aspirate karne ke baad what you have done is now the retina is attached back so now what you have done is that you have put a band okay you have put a polypropylene or silicon band here and tied it like this okay so what you are doing is there you were giving internal tamponade here you are giving a external tamponade are you getting my point everyone just give me a thumbs up okay so yahan par scleral buckling mein aapne external tamponade diya आपने 26 गेज नीडल से पहले एस्पिरेट कर लिया यू हैव फर्स्ट एस्पिरेटेड द फ्लूड विद अ 26 गेज और 30 गेज नीडल नीडल एंड देन यू हैव पुट अ बैंड एक्सटर्नली सो यू वुड आस्क मी सर व्हाट इज द बेसिक आइडिया ऑफ डूइंग दैट सो द बेसिक आइडिया ऑफ डूइंग दैट इज इट इज अ टोटली एक्स्ट्रा ऑक्यूलर प्रोसीजर सो यू हैव नॉट एंटर्ड द आई सो एनी कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ एंटरिंग द आई लाइक एंड ऑफ थेलमाइटिस और एनीथिंग लाइक दैट you have basically prevented if the patient is having done a scleral buckling and he fails then you can go with the next 
treatment which is called vitrectomy. So I write it again. What is the basically indication of doing a scleral buckling? So it is the same. The patient is having a regmatogenous retinal attachment where the breaks or the tears are anteriorly and we use silicon or polypropylene band to provide the external tamponade and the advantage here is this is a extraocular procedure okay so remember it is very difficult to put the band posteriorly so ye aankh ka anterior part hai and ye aankh ka posterior part hai to piche leke ja ke band kaise daloge so the normally what we do is if the breaks are anteriorly only then we can use this procedure okay so this is something which is a anomaly or i would say limitation of the scleral buckling that i cannot use it if the breaks are more posterior okay and definitely i cannot use it in the patients who are having a who, who are basically uh, having a chronic retinal attachment okay so this is called scleral buckling then i come to my last type of treatment which is basically now the gold standard of any type of retinal attachment whether it is a tractional retinal attachment whether it is a regmatogenous retinal attachment posterior retinal attachment there is a giant retinal tear so yahan par ek aur question sometimes they ask is what is the definition of giant retinal tear so if you have a very big tear which is covering almost 90 degree of the retina this is called giant retinal tear okay the problem with the giant retinal tear is that it basically like a folds it rolls on itself and it is very difficult to basically reposit it okay so we have to use heavy weight silicon oils in these cases okay so in every of this case i can go with the pars plana vitrectomy and after doing a pars plana vitrectomy i can use a silicon oil okay so if that would proceed with the internal tamponade so internal tamponade we can give for 3 months and after 3 months we can basically remove the oil also okay then the second thing what you can do is you can put a gas like which we used to give it in the your pneumatic retinopathy okay so dono cheeze kar sakte hain oil bhi dal sakte hain gas bhi dal sakte hain aur jab bhi koi chronic retinal attachment hoga tractional retinal attachment hoga जाइंट रेटेनल टीयर होगा या फिर पहले किसी में फेल्ड स्क्लेलर बकलिंग या फिर फेल्ड न्यूमेटिक रेटेनोपैक्सी होगी तो इन केसेस में व्हाट वी कैन डू इज वी कैन गो विद द विट्रेक्ट मी ओके ओके सो व्हाट आर द वेरियस कॉम्प्लिकेशंस ऑफ दिस पार्स प्लेना विट्रेक्ट मी सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट इज अ इंट्रा ऑक्यूलर प्रोसीजर एंड वेन एवर यू आर इंट्रा डूइंग अ इंट्रा ऑक्यूलर प्रोसीजर द ऑयल इन द विट्रस कैविटी they can basically increase the pressure of the eye okay they can basically block your trabecular meshwork and cause glaucoma okay very important side effect is they can cause secondary glaucoma and they can basically get the calcium deposited in the bowman's membrane in the cornea i call it bsk that is the band shaped keratopathy if there is a very small retinal detachment i can basically if let's say this is the very small retinal detachment okay i do not need to do any of the procedure i can just do a retinal photocoagulation around it okay so that it does not increase that can also be a procedure in a very small retinal detachment okay so this is a video which i am showing you where the vitrectomy is done can you see here so aapko dikh raha hai so ek illuminator dalte hain so i put a illuminator and another instrument which is basically cutting the which is called cutter which is cutting the vitreous so see it again so illumin illuminator basically illuminates the retina and then the cutter basically cuts the vitreous and aspirates it so this is called a vitrectomy surgery just give me a thumbs up if you are able to understand this okay this is so they can put it like a gif i am showing it to you again this is a vitrectomy surgery going on okay so this is a vitrectomy surgery going on so with this i end my today's session so hope you would have liked the session if you basically want to join for the plus subscription in the an academy course you can go with the plus subscription or the iconic subscription 
In the iconic subscription, you would have the advantage of the Unacademy app as well as the Prep Letter app, where you would be getting the video lectures, live classes, question bank, rapid revision notes, and the handwritten notes. And you can use my code of Thel10 to get 10% discount in any of the course that you want. Thank you very much for attending this session. Basically, you can subscribe for the Let's Crack Need PG channel. You can use my code of Thel10 and hit the bell icon for the new notifications and join our Telegram channel also. Till then, it is good night from.